welcome to The Mix with Honeysuckle, a show where I share my passions for food, fashion, beauty, parenting, and our home life. Are you ready to mix it up? In this episode, it's a birthday blowout bonanza smash for little Erisie's first birthday. I'll share how I made her smash cake and she may or may not have smashed it. Then I'll tap into my inner Martha Stewart and craft a birthday banner. And finally, her big birthday party where we enjoy a little tea time at Lottere and then a Korean barbecue feast at home. I'm excited to share all the details, so be sure to keep watching and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes of The Mix every Sunday. Let's get ready to mix, mix, mix. So first, we're gonna prepare our dry ingredients. Here I have three cups of all-purpose flour and I'm just gonna mix it with one teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of baking powder. And then we'll mix, mix, mix. And that's pretty much it for the dry ingredients. I'm gonna set this aside and then we'll start working on our wet ingredients by first starting off with our buttermilk, our DIY buttermilk. So I have a little bit of a baking hack for you guys. Anytime a recipe calls for buttermilk, for me, I don't wanna go out and buy another carton of something that I'll just use a tiny little bit of. So for every cup of milk, I'll add either one tablespoon of vinegar or lemon juice. In this case, I'm using vinegar because I don't have any lemons available. But I have one and a quarter cups here, so I'm using one tablespoon and one teaspoon of vinegar. Now I'll just pour it in, stir it, and then I'll let it sit for about five minutes until we're ready to use it up. Once you pour the vinegar in, you can already see it kind of curdle up. So now I have my handy dandy mixer. I haven't brought this guy out for the show in a really long time. It's just been sitting sad in the corner over there, but I thought for a special occasion, I would bring it out. So first, I'm gonna add one cup of unsalted butter. I've cut it into smaller pieces so that it could cream easily. Put it in my mixing bowl. And then with my paddle attachment, I'm just gonna turn it on to number three, like medium low, and start beating it for a few minutes so it gets nice and stretched out. You always wanna make sure that the butter is at room temperature so that it whips easily. Perfect. So it looks nice and creamed, and now I'm gonna add one and a half cups of granulated sugar and continue beating it until it becomes one. What I'm gonna do is turn it up to dial number six here and get it nice and fluffy. So my butter and sugar looks like it has doubled in size. It's nice and fluffy. So now I'm just gonna scrape down the bowl and then we're gonna add four eggs at room temperature one at a time while mixing. And now we're gonna mix all of the final ingredients. Here I have one tablespoon of vanilla extract that I'll add to our buttermilk, give it a stir, and then taking our dry ingredients, I'm gonna add a third of it into our mixing bowl with the butter. All right, now I'm gonna start our mixer on low, and while it's mixing, I'm gonna add a third of our buttermilk mixture, and then I'll just alternate adding between the dry ingredients and the buttermilk mixture until it's used up, and then we have our cake batter. I'm gonna mix it just until it comes together. You really don't wanna over mix this. So I'm gonna finish it off by hand. And just to make my life a little easier, I'm gonna remove this from the mixer and move this guy aside. Much better. All right, so I'm gonna finish mixing this by hand, but before I do that, I'm gonna add a little sparkle to our lives, or rather sprinkles. Here I have some natural sprinkles that I got from Sur La Table. These are made with natural dyes. They're like fruit-based. Uh, there's like beets, turmeric. I don't know what they used for green or blue, but it says it's natural, and it's really pretty. It's pastel. But I have about a third of a cup here. I don't want it to be overly funfettied, so this is just the right amount for me. If, if you want it like full of funfettis though, by all means add half a cup. Or if you want a little bit less, a quarter cup will do. I'm gonna dump this into my batter and mix everything up just until it comes together. Perfect, it's so beautiful with all the pastel dots in here. I'll transfer this onto my baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Now with my offset spatula, I'm just gonna spread it out evenly. 
to cover the whole sheet. Now I'll give it a quick shake to kind of flatten and even everything out. And into the oven it goes at 350 degrees for about 23 to 25 minutes just until it's cooled and brown. And ta-da! So the cake is done and I've let it cool completely because you don't want to work with it until it's cooled completely for the next steps. It's nice and springy and it's so pretty! I love all these little speckles. Now you guys are probably wondering, is she going to smash this flat thing? Absolutely not. I have a round cutter that we're just going to cut into this to make a three layer cake. Now I decided to get one of these because when I was living in our old condo, I had so many cake pans. I probably had like 10 different sizes and it took up so much space because they didn't really stack well. And so when I moved, I got smarter. I invested in these so that I can cut it into a sheet cake and I have a lot more space in my cupboards. You live and you learn. All right, so I'm going to take this ring and I'm going to cut out three. And you're probably wondering what about all this cake right here? It's not going to really go wasted. I mean, if you wanted to, you can make half circles like this and make a four layer cake. You can certainly do that. But I think I'm just going to keep it at three and I'll build these later. I do have to make another cake for her for the actual party. That's not going to get smashed. So I'm going to use this all up later on. So here I have my turntable and an 8 inch cake board. I'll just dot a little frosting in the center so it glues to our cake. So I made frosting earlier and if you guys want to see the full recipe for that I have an old video, a cute little zung video from way back when that I'll link at the end or I'll leave it in the description box below. This is just classic buttercream that goes perfectly well with a funfetti birthday cake. And now I'll carefully remove my cake. I'll set down our bottom layer, add a layer of frosting, spread it evenly, just a thin layer, don't make it super thick. If you guys wanted to go crazy and add like raspberry jam or a curd or any type of filling that you'd like, now would be the chance to do that. It's a party and this is my kind of turntable. Wicky, wicky, wicky. Another layer of buttercream. This reminds me of days pre-baby when I used to bake a lot more often and it's so therapeutic. I wish I had the time to do that still, but it feels good to be doing this again. You guys, I feel like this could be a little taller, so I think I will use the two half circles and I'm gonna add it right here. When you're doing a half circle, don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna be covering everything with buttercream after. And then the glue, the buttercream glue, will hold it at the bottom and on the top. This is so pretty! Oh my gosh! Okay, now I'm going to cover the whole cake with our crumb coat, and then we're going to go over it again with the buttercream that I've already dyed. As I'm frosting it, I can see that it's perfectly moist, not too dense, it's fluffy, oh, and this buttercream is going to lock it all in. This is too good of a cake to get smashed. I'm gonna be eating the leftovers for sure. <laughs> okay, this looks good for our crumb coat. So now I'm gonna go in with my colored icing. I'm gonna do a mix of orange, pink, and white to make it kind of ombre looking. Let's see if it turns out okay. I'm going to go in with the white frosting all over again, this time make it really clean and smooth. Remember to lay it on thick, just like as if you were to flirt with that guy you really like, and scare him away. So that looks good. It still looks kind of rough, but that's okay because now I'm going to go in with my colors and I'm just going to dab the orange and pinks here and there. I'm going to go in with my bench scraper, barely put any pressure on it, and then I'm going to twist my turntable to smooth everything out. I really hope this works. With any holes, I'm just going to go back in and fill it with the colors. Just like right here, it didn't really catch it. I'm going to go in with pink here. Sometimes you need your offset spatula to kind of help press everything in. I'm 
gonna clean up the sides later, but just to finish up real quick, it's got like this cool unicorn vibe almost. And I think it'll look really pretty with some sprinkles on top, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And our smash cake is almost done. Now she's just gotta blow out her candles and smash the thing. Let me just admire my work real quick. You guys, be sure to follow me on Instagram at honeysucklebees to see the whole party and the behind the scenes. And now it's time to get crafty. I'm gonna create a banner that shows her progression throughout the whole year, starting with the day she was born up until 11 months. Of course, I'm leaving room for 12 months so we can add and finalize her whole year. So for this project, I'm gonna be using these pre-made banners. Now, I found these at Michael's and they come in all different colors, sizes, and shapes. And I really like this burlap one for a little rustic feel on our patio deck. The only thing with this one is that it comes in 10, like a pack of 10, and I need 12, so I had to get two. So I had to get two, and I'm gonna borrow two from this one and just transfer it over here. The nice thing is, is that there's a string and they're all movable, so I can just reattach them later. But I'll show you guys that later on. And of course, I have 12 photos of her, one from every month. <sighs> I can't believe how fast she's grown. I don't have one for her 12 month yet, so I'm starting with one when she was first born, so zero day. Some glue, I have a combination of tacky glue and Elmer's glue, a pen or a pencil, my nifty paper cutter because it makes life a lot easier when trimming photos and paper, but you can use a scissor if you want, small construction paper, some letters and number stickers. I'm actually only going to be using the numbers back here. And finally, some decorations. I opted for butterflies and flowers because that's kind of what she's into right now. She always loves watching Little Baby Bum and the little butterfly on there is her favorite. So I thought I would make a banner with some little butterflies. Obviously, I think next year it'll be like Sesame Street or I don't know, what are one-year-olds into? Sesame Street? Uh, bubble guppies? I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. All right, so to start though, I'm gonna start by measuring out the construction paper against the banner. And what I'm using the construction paper for is just to create a border behind our photo. Unfortunately, the photo is way too big for the size of the banner, so I'm gonna have to trim it down. Did you guys know that it's really hard to find photos, uh, printed photos, at least within like 24 hours anyways, uh, three by fives, they don't seem to make those anymore. So I had to get four by six, which is the smallest that I could find. So I'm just gonna measure it down and I think right here, mark it with my pencil. All right, now it's time to trim. Perfect, semi-perfect, perfect to me. All right, now I'll just go ahead and trim 12 of these to match. Now the next step, I'm gonna have to measure out each photo separately. And what I'm gonna do is layer this square right on top of the photo. And I wanna cut the photo slightly smaller than this border so that it fits the frame. This was when she just came out, you guys. She's playing on me and staring at her mama. That's the look of love right there. Now, if you guys have a photo pen, that would work much better, but unfortunately, I don't have one, so I'm just gonna use this pen right here. I'll mark the photo, and then we'll start cutting. Now again, the photo's gonna be slightly smaller than the border, so I'm just gonna move it over about one centimeter. And we'll do that to each side. And luckily, the photo came with this white border already, so I'm just gonna trim that off, and it should fit. The art of DIY, at least for me, is that it doesn't have to be perfect. This is a way for me to chronicle how far I've come in my crafting when we look back in about five years. I bet I'll be really good by then, huh? After helping Aracy with all her projects. So let's see how it fits. Not bad, not bad. Only 11 more to go. So I'm gonna work on trimming the rest of the photos and then I'll show you guys how I will put the rest of this together. So the next step is actually gonna be for me to glue down the photo onto the construction paper. This glue right here is photo safe. 
So I'm just gonna dab a little bit on each corner. Oh. Okay, and now I'll just let that dry while I continue working on the rest of the photos. All right, so while those all dry, I'm gonna go ahead and prep my banner. See, I have to string them anyways, so it's a good thing I bought extra. Our burlaps are now all attached to the string, so now I'm just gonna glue down the photos based on the month. So I'm gonna start with her newborn photo, day zero, glue it down, and then just go month by month until it's all filled up. And then with our stickers, we'll just label it by month. And then we'll just decorate them randomly with these pretty floral paper, paper floral and butterflies. And it's ready to be hung that actually turned out a lot better than I expected. If you guys watched my DIY chocolate bar video, you'll know that I have the crafting skills of a five-year-old. In fact, they might even be better at it than me, but this turned out pretty good. After showing my sister the banner, she had a pro tip. Now she is one crafty mama. She said instead of using the tacky glue, use glue dots because the burlap kind of curled under because of the moisture and she said the glue dots would keep that from happening. a little crooked but it's gonna get smashed anyways <laughs> and all the attention she was getting. <sighs> now guys, let's head to the Grove and enjoy a tea time with a lot of delicious treats. We were in macaron heaven. My goodness, the desserts kept coming and coming and coming. I thought we were just gonna get that little tower for the pastries and desserts, but they brought out more macarons and then little cream puffs for everyone. Man, I was sugared out. But the best part was when they brought out the cream puff birthday cake for her. How beautiful. And then of course we had a little accident. Oh. I don't even know what I was doing. Why did I bend down at that second? Our friends and family all the way from the Bay Area and Arizona came to LA to celebrate this little girl's big day. Of course, I think it was just our little excuse to get everyone back together for a little reunion so they could visit us and experience the sunny LA weather. Now my favorite part of the day was when everyone came back home to enjoy a Korean barbecue feast outdoors. The best part about moving down to LA for me is being so close to the epic K-Town where we have Korean barbecue all the time. I thought since we had so many people here and uh, I love communal food events, I thought why not just grill on the table with all the accoutrements, banchans, everything. Everyone loved it and it was a great way for all of us to catch up and just be together and talk in a more casual and fun setting. 
This first birthday was one for the books. I keep telling everyone that she's not gonna have another birthday like this until she turns five, so it's not gonna be like this every year. First birthday is always special, but I'm so thankful that we were able to share it with all of our friends and family, and thank you guys so much for joining along this little journey with us. I hope you guys had fun, and if you guys have any babies that you're creating a first birthday smash cake for, I'd love to know how it went. Thank you so much for watching, and next week be sure to tune in on a work week theme. Everything from meal prepping to outfits and ways to make your work week a little easier. I'll see you guys next time on The Mix. Bye!